Hi everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us on this lovely Monday evening. I don't know where it is where you are, but it's frigging cold here. You would never believe it was June. Um, I've got the lovely Lindsay McIver joining us. You see her a lot popping up on our Facebook feeds. Um, she's always full of useful hints and tips and she follows everything that we do and gives everything a good try. Um, and I'm always pleased that whatever we've shown you, Laura and I have shown you, as before we've told you, we're hobby bakers. We show you recipes on how we make them. We're not saying it's right, it's how we make them. And it's always nice to see you guys giving them a try. And Lindsay is one of those people who gives everything a try that we've shown. So a few weeks ago, I gave a shout out and said, if anybody wants to come and join us, come and join us. So if you could all give us a big like for Lindsay joining us this evening, because she is nervous. Um, she comes from Bonnie, Scotland, so we're hoping we've got lots of her Scottish friends there. And if they're there, come on then, give us a cheer. The girl's nervous. <laughs> so we've done a little practice run tonight as well. Um, just a quickie, Caroline is going to join us to answer questions. She's here. She's here, John's just telling me. Um, and you've all got to know each other, which I find is fabulous. I feel like we're a little community on Mondays, which is so nice because when I watch it later on in bed later, it's so nice that you're all chatting amongst yourselves and helping each other with answers. Because as you know, I can't see anything and neither can Lindsay because we're looking at the camera and John never tells us anything and he is watching. <laughs> so Maria's here laughing as well. Maria's, uh, Maria's been doing little video clips for us. So when you see the little video clips the next day, that's Maria who's been making them for us. So let me just tell you what's going to happen tonight. Um, Lindsay is going to make chocolate Viennese swirls, okay, with chocolate mint Viennese swirls, with chocolate mint buttercream. My mistake, I told Caroline today it was with velvet vanilla buttercream, but it's not, it was chocolate mint buttercream. And then let me just show you what's going on over here so that you know what to look out for. So John, do you want to just pop over? So Lindsay made some lemon ones earlier, okay? I have put the uh, recipe up on the Facebook page. I've pinned it to the top. The recipe on the, page, on the Facebook page is lemon Viennese swirls with blueberry buttercream. All you've got to do is adapt it to the flavor that you want. <clears throat> now Lindsay's made chocolate mint here, but you can use raspberry ripple, you can use sherbet, you can use whatever flavor you want to make these things. They're absolutely delicious and they melt in your mouth. Um, you'll see here that I've had a go at doing the peonies, okay? And um, so the peonies, the FMM cutters, so if John wants to pop over here, John. People say it's not working. People are saying it's not working? Okay, well I've still just got to go with it, guys. I really don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. Are you Mixed on? again. Mixed again. All I know is our internet's working. Did you check which network we were on here? Mm. Okay, no worries. Right, well, we've just got to go with it, guys. I am sorry. But we are going to use the easiest peony um, cutter ever, apparently. I've never used any of these cutters before, and I have made three peonies tonight, and we'll talk about those later. I've used the Saraceno modeling paste, which I'll talk about later as well. Um, and I've got the Squire's Kitchen here. I've got the Cake Star Kit. So, and then just let me just tell you, we brought back some old favorites from last year. Last year, we had these three delicious flavored icing sugars out. So we had um, strawberry decorate, stra strawberry lemonade, strawberry decorate, and peach bellini. Now we brought them out last year, we just brought them out for the summer and they were absolutely fantastic. They've gone down the storm. So these are in our lovely new bags, okay? So hopefully if you can order those, you'll get them. Get them. Uh, they're gluten-free, suitable for vegetarians, suitable for vegans, dairy-free. And then on the back, we have got the recipe website. So if you want to have a look at anything that we make, just nip over to our recipe website. I don't actually know where it is on this bag. Oh, that is there. So all you'll do is nip over to our recipe website and make anything you want with our delicious icing sugars. We've got there how to make your simple buttercream. And that's those free flavours. I'm going to do these as a prize tonight as well. I'll tell you more about that later. And then if you're just wondering what's here, Laura made marshmallows the other week. And I know quite a few of you have had a go at it with fantastic results. And you know, marshmallows has been the thing that scares me. Laura does a lot of things. And uh, I don't do them myself because I'm a bit of a scaredy cat when it comes to things like this. But um, 
Lindsay, if you wonder why they're in these little pots, it's because me and Lindsay have been scoffing them all afternoon. So these are marshmallows made with the lemon drizzle flavouring, and these are the marshmallows made with raspberry ripple with a swirl of raspberry jam in them. So they're absolutely delicious, and any of you who've not made them, uh, pop along to our uh, getting on my words, and all up. Pop along to our website, Sugar and Crumbs, mixing it up .com. Grab the recipe, choose your favourite flavour, and give them a go. They are so simple. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pass you over to Lindsay. So how's the signal going, John? Okay. So okay. I hope you can hear us all well. Take your finger off the sound. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to pass you over to Lindsay, Thanks and very much, Carol. she's going to do these for you. We're going to start tonight. Obviously, we're going to be doing the chocolate mint um, peony swirl. So I'm going to start by just putting 250 grams of butter in the mixer. My own mixer that I brought from home, just so that I was comfortable. Yeah, guys, I've not got another new mixer. <laughs> 250 grams of plain flour. 50 grams of corn flour. Just make sure I get every last drop. And 50 grams of the chocolate mint sugar and crumbs flavoured icing sugar. Now, if there's any guys out there that's maybe struggling with my accent, and I already think I'm sounding more broad than I am normally. Whether that's me, I do not know. And we'll just translate. <laughs> ask Carol later on. I'm just going to wipe my hands. And I'm just going to turn on my mix. I'll start it off slow to start with. Now I've done these before. I've done lemon, I've done coconut, I've done Jaffa Twist. And I've also done the chocolate mint before. All fabulous flavours that work well. My colleagues, I know who many of you are watching tonight can uh, confirm that they're all delicious. This will just take a few minutes to mix up. And what we're looking for, it just kind of goes like into a paste. It takes five to eight minutes, maybe even less. Mix it up and it's starting to get well done. And if Laura, Carol's daughter, is watching tonight, I hope uh, I hope it turns out um, just like she does. And I'm not doing anything wrong. Here's my spatula. I'll just use this. I'll just scrape it all off. Thank you very much. Thanks, Carol. I'll put that can I have the spat? Show that. Thank you. I'm just going to give it a slight. So, Lindsay, you were saying before that one of the things you like to do with me. Mm -hmm. It's because it's a quick recipe if you've got friends coming around. Absolutely. To at home I like things, I'm always happy to try something once, whether that's something difficult or something you say. If Mary Berry was to phone and say she's coming for tea, then at least this is something quick to rock up. Now, I like to use the small bags, I feel that they're better just having a small handful of the mix in the bag, it seems to get um, come out the bag better. When I was doing it earlier on, I used a large bag and put too much in and struggled. So they are rectified in my mistake and I went with a wee bag now. Let me just get my trays over just now. Just to have that ready.
Now I hope my colleagues are tuning in tonight, so I'll give a big shout out to Vivian Gray, Tira Sm Doyle and anybody else. That's what I know that Gary and Lynn are going to be tuning in. Hopefully my sister, Joanne. I bet this sounds a bit strange, eh? But it certainly feels strange for me. Maybe I'll just put a little bit more in there. And we're going to, I'm also using tonight the 1M Wilton tip. I think it just gives a nice, pretty swirl. I'll just give it a new shake. Well, this is another way. Eh? Well, <laughs> another way to feel your bag. <laughs> it works better actually with doing the shape with the large bag. <laughs> and there I'm getting in a greasy mess already. And then hopefully the ears out of there. What I like to do is also kind of like just twist the bag just to get a little bit of pressure. I'm just going to clean my hands because I'm a bit greasy. And hopefully it goes there. <laughs> Here we go. I'm just going to start by doing little swirls, like so. And when it finishes up, you can just press that in and it sticks it together. Now the recipe does say that this makes 30 biscuits. Each time I make this, I either get under 30 if I've done them too big, or over 30 if I've done them too small. But as you see, the, the more that I pipe, the less is in my bag, the, the do come out a bit better. Which nozzle tip are you using? This is the Wilton 1M. Which is on our website. Which is on the website. It's one ninety nine. Oh, there's a wee big one coming. Mm -hmm. It's ideal if you can try and get them all the same size so that when you glue them together with your buttercream, they match up evenly. That's why I think it's quite nice lining them up under each other, isn't it? Well, when I first started making them, I was just... They were Randomly. <laughs> I started with doing too big and then doing... Too, whereas I kind of try and line them up five in a row. Yeah. And it's... It works. It kind of works. I'm just going to fill my bag. And this is where I get messy. Well, what I was going to say is, should we put these in the oven and we'll come back and do those afterwards? Absolutely, yeah. Because what we can do is get these going now and then you can scrape up and get those in afterwards. Yeah. Put those over there. So, that's right, okay. 15 minutes on, do they need in there, Lindsay? Um, the recipe on the website does say 13 to 15. I always go with 13 at home. Right. So, did you get so, that? 13 to 15 minutes, and Lindsay always goes with 13. What I will say is, when you're doing, I don't know if you want to come back to these, John. Mm -hmm. If you're doing like the lemon drizzle or coconut or any of the flavours that don't like colour, you can tell when these are kind of done, so there's like a golden brown. Yeah. Obviously, these are darker, so it's kind of hard to tell if it was underdone. You certainly would know it's burnt, I'm sure, because it kind of goes a bit black on the. Good, right, well, I'll leave you to fill up your bag and I'm going to start telling everybody about this peony cutter. Okay, so guys, let me just get this set up here and then Lindsay can do her next batch, get them in the oven while I do this for you. So, the tools that I'm going to use, let's just get this over here. And get this over here. I've already pre cut some of these. I'm going to show you how to cut them anyhow so it's easy. Um, and I've just got a few things that I've got here. So we've got them all together. Just to get me to the head of the game. So guys, I've never used these cutters before. Tonight is the first time. I've got to be honest, Claire was here last week and I was going to have a go last week. 
but as per usual, my Mondays are always mad busy after the weekend, and um, I just, I had a go in front of Claire. I cut the first cutter and basically I bottled it. I just thought, you know what, let's leave it till this week. And um, I promised myself that I would practice with these all weekend. I haven't, and Lindsay's had to sit watching me make them while she's been doing her Viennese swirls. So the peony cutter, there's several cutters from the FMM range, and um, the peony cutter comes with three pieces. It's called the easiest peony ever, okay? Now everybody likes peonies different ways, so there's loads of different ways that you can do them, but this is the FF, FMM easiest peony cutter ever. It's on our website, it's for sale now. Can't remember how much it is, someone's gonna have to ping over there and have a look, but I have put the link on our Facebook page. So three cutters, there's, a, there's the easiest rose, and there's the easiest smallest rose, and there's the easiest carnation. So there's a whole load of them that are easy. Uh, the one thing I will say, they're all the same principle. So first of all, let's sort of grab a few things. I'm using the Saraceno modeling paste. So I don't know whether any of you guys know anything about Saraceno, and sugar paste and modeling paste is not my thing. I actually don't know what my thing is, really. <laughs> um, I just like nifty nozzles and half-flavored icing sugars. So I thought I would give it a go with the Saraceno. From what I can understand, Saraceno is made with coconut butter or coconut oil, whichever is the right one, and it's very soft and pliable. And it actually doesn't ever set hard. It sets firm, but if you make a mistake, you can actually just grab hold of it again and re-roll it. Whereas when you use flour paste, once that sets, you can make it very, very thin, but it also breaks very easily. So it's really up to you what type of effect that you want to use. So I thought, you know what, we sell Saraceno, I've never used it, let's give it a go. So if we just pop over here, if I'll bring them to you here, it'd be easier. So this was peony number one this afternoon that I tried. Peony number two and peony number three, okay. And the more of these that you put on, the better. So I'm just, I've just set these out because I'm going to roll another small one. So I've done three bigger cuts and a small cut. And I am using we can see this. I'm going to use Purple Cupcakes Cornflower Pouch. We sell these on the website. I do know how much these are actually. They're three pounds each. They're a great little thing. Do you know what? For a simple idea, you know, they, they do make life very, very easy. So, cornflower. So, we're just going to give our top a little dusting, a little light dusting. There we go. And the first part of the Saraceno that we're going to get, we're just going to make into a small ball. So, just like that. And then I am just going to thin it down at the bottom there. You see it? This funny little, like a little light bulb shape. That's what we're going to do. Hope I've got this right, but this is the way that I'm going to do it. And then the smallest cutter, it's got this jagged edge. So you just do an imprint. So you just put it on a few times and you do that little imprint. Yeah, you see that? Got it? So we're gonna pop that there, sit that. That's going to be the center of our peony. Now mistake number one here, John goes back to here. I didn't bring the petals up over, over. I made it too big. So see, you've got this nice big fat one here. So I made that too big. And then I'll get some more of this out. I'll do the light pink because I've done two dark pinks. These are fabulous colours, and I will tell you girls, you're never going to lose weight with this. It tastes gorgeous. I think I probably ate half today. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay's laughing because she knows it's true. This is really nice stuff. It smells gorgeous. This kitchen smells beautiful. It smells beautiful all the time, anyhow. But it smells of chocolate mint and this amazing, I don't know what this flavour is here, of whatever this flavour is, it, it's just to die for. So even if you do muck it up, at least you can eat it straight away. So I'm just gonna roll it out. And the little set that I'm using is this cake style set. We sell these, it gives you a, a cake flattener thing, what smoother there, rolling pin and some other tools. And they all come as a set from Cake Star. So I'm just gonna use the little rolling pin out of there 
do it nice and long. So pick it up a couple of times. So I put a post out, out yesterday about our fundraising event, okay? And we, so far, before we went live, we've had £300 in donations. So I will shout out about them at the end of the week. But that's a really good start. So everybody who's joined our GoFund for National Cupcake Day on Thursday in aid of Alzheimer's, thank you to those people who have donated. Um, we've had lots of people take up our offer for a couple of bags of icing sugar as well. So I'm looking forward to what they're going to do for their event. It doesn't have to be anything big. So there's our little cutter. I'm going to just pop this down on here. And then what we do is you get the rolling pin and you just smooth off the corners. Now it's quite important, you just do one side first, so you just thin off the corners. So John, if your back's going, you want to sit down, there's a chair behind you. So as you know, John suffers with a bad back here on Mondays. So I've just thinned off the petals, and then when you've thinned off the petals, you just rub it there so you can get this nice cup. Yeah? Now, whatever you do, don't turn it round that way. So we've got it there. Flip it over. Yeah? So it's quite important that you flip it over so now it's that way. And if you can feel my heavy breathing, I am sorry. We're not putting music on anymore because some people love it, some people hate it. I put it on so that I can disguise my breathing because I'm asthmatic. So uh, I can hear myself moment so then what we are going to do is i'm going to use the squires glue but we have two glues for sale and i don't know what i've done with the other one i'll bring it over here before here it is we have the squires glue and we have the cake star glue okay so all we're going to do there is get the glue just a little dab try not to get any on your foam base because if you get it on your foam base it's going to get sticky so you just put a little bit of glue, one side there, in the petal. Do you find the glue works much better than just using plain water, Karen? Do you know what? I've used both, to be fair. Because I'm not a sugar crafter, I don't really know the answers to that. You know, I, I do make when flowers do and stuff. I find when I've got no glue, I use water. <laughs> but um, whether it's the best thing or not, I don't know. We eat our cakes too quick to know. So, um then you fold over this side. So you fold it over. I've gone all nervous, look, all my hands have gone all dizzy. So we fold it right over. And see this last one? This one's got nothing to fold over onto this one. So it confused me on my first flower, but I've realized now you've got to take that one all the way with you. So that petal there, that's got nothing else to sit on, has to go all the way. So we're now going to Press that down, so make sure that's nice and thin. And then we are just gonna put a bit of glue here. Try not to get anything on your foam pad. And then we get our centerpiece and we start. So I'll try and do it this way. So we're gonna get our centerpiece Fold it round like that. And that is your first petal going on. So you push that over. Yeah, I'm going to get my little cake stick out in a minute. So we'll just set that one there. So I'm going to do exactly the same now. So it's a little bit long-winded you having to watch this, but if anybody wants to ask any questions, John's actually sat down and he should be able to see now and shout out. So if anybody wants to ask me anything, I'm not saying I'll know the answer, but maybe somebody will be here who does know the answer. So, John, has anybody asking anything? John, have we got any regular people here who we know? Yes. 
Don't hear me go. All our same hellos, are they? Yeah. yeah. So give us a shout out. So uh, give us a shout out. Who's here? I think some people are having problems screaming frozen, so they need to be able to watch it afterwards. All right then. So I don't know why the screen's frozen. I did have to say that I could blame our internet previously, but I can't now because our internet has been flying. So I don't know how to help you. But um, a couple of things I do want to say to you. I'm going to do catch up afterwards. And cat I didn't do it last week when I had Claire here, but I am going to do it tonight. And the reason I'm going to do it tonight is because I want to talk about the Alzheimer's thing. And I've been clearing out my kitchen cupboards. And um, I've just dug out a few things that I don't want anymore that I was going to run up to the charity shop. And I thought, you know what, why not give you lot the opportunity to buy them for the Alzheimer's charity, if anybody wants them. So I'm going to do that at half past nine uh, with Lindsay. And we'll talk more about how that's going to work later. So this is the second small one. So I'm just going to put that back on. I'm just going to run that round again. And I'm stood in front of this oven and I am melting. Are you melting? Um, cool as I'm cucumber. on fire. Cool as cucumber. Right, so there's my little cake stick. So I'm just going to tuck in a few there, but I'm also going to just widen up a few. Uh, yeah. Right. And then just keep squeezing in. So we had a donation of £100 off one of my family members, which I thought was very generous. A donation of £50 off another family member. So I was really very well pleased to both family members there, cousin and my mother. So thank you very much, Mum. Totally grateful. And thank you, cousin, who's put himself as anonymous. So I don't know whether he wants me to shout out or not, but I'll just call him cousin. And I do love him dearly. He's one of my favourite cousins, I must say. And um, and then we've had everybody else who's put in as well. But for the Just Giving Fund, let me just tell you, somebody made a comment and said that Just Giving um, take 20% of the donation and they don't, they take 3%. And I don't know whether anybody's realised, but I've just done a massive mistake. So do you need to get these out the oven? I'm going to just take them out just now. Right, so let me just move out the way while Lindsay grabs these out the oven. So I'm going to, oh, sorry, sorry. Do you want to take my pen? Okay. So let's just see what these look like so that you can see them. Goes in. Come over. Now, I don't want to burn myself tonight. That's not the norm for me. <laughs> so if we just leave them on there, just put the tray straight on, it'll be absolutely fine. Okay. So here we are, I'm going to leave these to cool now, and then Lindsay's going to come back and buttercream them. So go on, Lindsay. Now these are a bit flat looking, but again, I think that's because I did overfill my bag. And obviously, when these ones, these do look, look a lot better. I think when you get a better hand, for, you know, when you get a good hold of the bag and the paper, you know, they do pipe out a lot easier and better. These are a bit flat, but they're going one way, so it doesn't really matter. Well, the thing is, Lindsay, they may well be a bit flat to you, but they look great to me. And the main thing is, is what they taste like. I it? think it's just I'm a perfectionist, and when it doesn't look right, I'm not happy. <laughs> they're all right. They're even better. <laughs> Good. Which, uh, so let's get those over there then, and I'll carry on with my peony. Yeah, so going back to the Just Giving Fund. Oh, let me just tell you what I did with this peony. Did anybody realise what I did? Eh? Who realised? How many people realised the mistake? I forgot to turn it over. <laughs> and uh, that's because I was too busy chatting. So you know what, when they say a woman can do two things at once, and I'm one of those who always says I can, I've mucked it up. But you know what I say? It always goes all right on the night. And thankfully, because I've already balled that one, uh, the other side, bald it, that sounds awful, doesn't it? Um, hopefully the glue isn't... Oh, wait a minute. So then, we're going to do that, flip that over there. 
we're going to save this. So you can muck it up on the night. I'm going to save it. So again, we're going to fold it over. Now these are the bigger petals. Yeah. So I'm just going to clean that one there. Flatten it down. Get the glue. Are you keeping an eye on your second set? Yeah. Did you squeeze them out while I was doing this, son? Yeah. Yeah, get you ready. Right, so all we're going to do now is go round again. So we're just going to thread that round again. And I'm going to do three of these round. So I've got glue coming out on this side here. If you're wondering why I'm fighting with it. With my cocktail stick. I'm just going to widen them out a bit. So you can use a cocktail stick or a cake tester, and I said cocktail stick, but it isn't, it's actually my cake tester. So we're just gonna, gonna squeeze it in. So let's get the next one, sorry. I don't know where to go, is that okay now? So, and then I'm just gonna do this one again. So we've got three to go, just to make it a bit bigger. Really very easy this. I went to a peony class a couple of years ago where you put them on wires and you know what the lady who made them made them beautifully but I haven't got the same type of patience you know what I like I'm all rush rush um, I think if you really are into your sugar craft you know you're going to be looking at this thinking what the hell is Carol doing at the moment but what I'm going to say to you is this is the quick easy way um, the peony class I went to, you know, give it to the lady who did it for me. Um, absolutely beautiful, but I've never made one since. And that's because of all the faffing around with wires and stuff like that, which is not my thing. So again, so you can see, I'll just turn that round. So you can see this is how the leaf is uh, at all, sorry. So it's just overlapping. Got a little... You only put a little bit of glue on. Don't put loads on, you're gonna flood it otherwise. And then, just going to thread that round again. You can see how that is. Again, you squeeze it. So you're probably wondering how fat the base is. Look how fat the base is there. Yeah, huge. But it is gonna to have to sit on a cake which I haven't made for you, I have to tell you. I'm just showing you how to make these. So again, get my little cake thing out. So the center ones push in and then push these out. And then we've got the last one. So the reason I pre-cut these is that it's better if they've just been out 20 minutes cut. So if you, if you cut them first and then just leave them for 20 minutes or so, just to harden up a bit. Now I've used modeling paste here, Saraceno modeling paste, okay. So this is a lot softer and you can remold it again. So if you muck this up, you can remold it. Whereas if you use flour paste, once you've set it out and cut it and it goes hard, if you muck it up or break it, then you're knackered to be fair. So just remember, if you're gonna do something that you want really hard and tight don't use this use squires modeling uh, flower paste or another flower paste that you prefer but this is modeling paste so we're just gonna put the and you only put the glue halfway up don't go to the edge of the petals just in the little well line across the middle can you see how thin it is i don't know if you can see how thin it is and then I'll just turn it around this way so you can see. When we fold over, we fold over, so this bit here, is, it goes right over. And that bit does. So, and then we flatten that down. You can see the glue coming through. Doesn't matter, because that's all gonna be stuck. So another one. 
stuck to the flower here. So we are going to do this. So I'm just going to put it on. And because it is modelling paste, it gives, you know, it's quite forgiving. It stretches and moves with you, it doesn't break. And of course, anything that does break off, you want to eat because it's just gorgeous, this stuff, I have to tell you. That's too nice. So, this is me fourth peony today. So, do you think they're getting any better? So, you've seen number one, number one. Peony number one, very first one I did this afternoon. Peony number two. Peony number three. And live for you guys, under pressure, boiling hot kitchen, peony number four. <laughs> so, let's just get them all together. Do we like it? What do we think? Mm -hmm. So, and then what else I've got then is, I've got myself a little leaf. You can see that's been in this little cupcake case there. And again, very simply, how thin the leaf is. Just a little bit of modeling paste. Flatten it down. There's my little doofer. Put that down there. So, probably got a little bit too much corn flour on there. Let's not worry about that. Because when you've got too much, you buy one of these things from B&Q and dust it off. <laughs> so, spin it out again. That's called the paintbrush. No proper baking tool here. A paintbrush will do. So then I'm going to get my leaf cutter, which comes with the set as well. Um, flour paste as well this has gone to waste because if you don't put this straight back into um, a cellophane bag when it's flour paste it goes hard immediately so you need to stick it into an airtight bag take all the air out the good thing with this modeling paste look this pink one's been sat out all the time and um, you just remold it back in so less waste and um, I, obviously I'll cling film it all after but uh, for now it can stay there like that so we're going to put this on here and then in the set you get another little tool in the cake set. Just dust that off. You just, I don't know whether you use this one or not, as I said to you I'm not a sugar crafter, but it just gives a little bit of effect. I'll get out one and I sat mine in there before so I'm just going to sit it there for now. So here we come back to our peony and what we're going to do is we are going to cut it there. So we are going to cut it there like that so it can sit on its side and again because this is modeling paste it gives you the opportunity to move petals back in move petals back in, move them out, you can play with it, whereas with flower paste you're a bit stuck really because once it sets, it sets. And I've just put a little bit of glue on there and I'm just going to fold that to the back. Slippy little thing. Pull that to the back and I'm just going to stick it up there like that. And then I'm going to put the other flower, paper, flower uh, leaf on later when that's set. So, do we like it? Was that okay? Was that easy? Did I explain it well enough, guys? <laughs> Crystal. Crystal? <laughs> well, John, John must have been impressed. He was very quiet through the whole experience. <laughs> so, like I say, this is my first attempt and I am actually really pleased. I'd be quite happy to pop them onto a cake. So, you know, all I want to say to you, if anybody's scared of making a peony, these FMN cutters are so easy to use. And we do sell them on the set on our website. So any of you ladies who've got cakes, wedding cakes to make, 
then you can make them the very easiest way. And I think it deserves its name, easy, the easiest peony cutter ever. So, uh, so you there could, you go. You could, you could make them a lot bit in advance, couldn't you? Oh Karen? yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Make them in advance. You don't need to make them on the day. I've just made them today because it's the first time I've actually ever had a go. And look at this uh, modeling paste here. You know, it's not gone hard. It's lovely and soft, so you're not wasting anything at all. So you can use your Squire's flower paste, which is great if you want a thinner effect. Um, but uh, no, that's a green. So we sell the Saraceno. So I'll just go back to over here. So I'm just going to put mine in there. So let's just talk about the Saraceno here. There's several colours. There's several colours, whatever your colour you want to make the peony. So you've got two greens for your leaves. Be nice to two-tone those, in fairness. I don't think we'd ever want a black peony, but you know, we've got the lilac, the blue, the brown, orange, beige, well that's skin tone, um, yellow, lime green, dark green, red, fuchsia, pink, and we do sell them in tubs. So let's just talk to you about tubs. These are all 250 size, and then we do do the one kilo size. We do the, in two colours, we do the skin tone and we do the white, okay? And this one is the white. And like I say, it's a fantastic product. That's available on our site. And I am going to quickly talk to you about these two nozzles, okay? So, you know I love this baby. This is my favourite leaf tip. I use it all the time. I'm always going on about it. And I used a tip the other week, the 113, the 114, and I'm always struggling to try and get stock of it. And I found it's mama. Look at that. Look at that. I'm so in love with it. So we've got baby and we've got his mummy over here. So this is the Wilton 366 and that is beautiful i love it it's on the website it's 199 as the little one is 199 as well so both the same price and look what i made with it today so here we go so i've made this today okay and this again is such an easy cake now i have done it on a dummy cake um, simply because of speed but if you were going to use the wilton easy layers pan so if you wanted to use this pan here, did your five layers, you could get your height there for your, for your cake. You don't have to do it rainbow, you could do it all chocolate or all vanilla, but those are five pans, do buttercream. And all I've done here, I'm gonna show you in a minute how I've done it, but all I've done is rough coated the buttercream on the outside, and I've used this wonderful 366 leaf tip here. And this is a cake, guys that you can knock up very quickly you know what i'm like it's all about quickness so i'm going to pass you back over to lindsay and we're going to come back and decorate this cake again in a few minutes so lindsay where are we up to i've just taken my second batch and here we are now kitchen is smelling gorgeous what I've, what I forgot to mention at the start is i had my oven on at 180 degrees so i'm just going to leave these on the cooker to cool, watch your back now. Mm -hmm. Right. Are you going to just cream these up now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, we just wanted to check them for you. So here's my blue Peter moment. Your blue Peter moment. So let me just get a dishcloth and wipe down all this sugar paste in a minute. This uh, icing sugar corn flour. While you're doing that, I'm just going to quickly just pick up my buttercream. But before I do that, I'll just tell you what I. Just get my ingredients. I have used 100 grams of butter, unsalted, and 200 grams of the sugar and crumbs, chocolate, mint, ice and sugar. I've got some already prepared, so I'm just going to give that a, a quick wrap up just to re-soften it. Because it's cold in here tonight, so things are stiffening up really cold. quick. Cold? I'm on fire. I'm not going to have a hot air. I'm from Scotland. One of the coldest places on the planet. Right, so that's my butter cream. Okay, so that's your butter cream. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of that on the top of this cake. Just to give it a little bit of a... Do you want me to do 
that. So do they like my peonies, John? Yeah? Do. Did that go down well? Good. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to try them this week? What? The peonies. Who's going to have a go at trying them? I bet you do. I was going to do it this <laughs> afternoon, but I didn't. Yeah. For any of you guys who've got the rose, uh, the rose cutters or the carnation cutters, they work exactly the same. All it is, it's just a different shape. There's no difference in making them whatsoever. The first time I made the biscuit, well, the first time I made the lemon ones, what I'd done was I just, just when I was putting the buttercream on, I just was using my knife. However, I did find that I was kind of breaking them. So obviously then I went on to the piping bag. And again, because I think it's a gorgeous um, result, I'm going to be using the 1M again. We're going to get our serving plate here. Yeah. <laughs> if Rob Allen is watching, I really, really love this. <laughs> this is a lovely gift off Rob Allen. Um, he sent it to me after he was on Facebook Live a few weeks ago. And I have to say, it's fabulous. And I love he's, it. He's got one himself which he uses for his cheesecake. And Lindsay has come in and fell in love. So Rob, Lindsay wants a message of where you got it from. And it best not be Asda. <laughs> no. <laughs> This is just lush. My friend back home loves everything that I make. And even my colleagues, all everybody hears about is Carol this, Carol that, Carol this. Are you my little stalker then? I think so. <laughs> I've never had a stalker. Mm. <laughs> I'm just going to give that squish in the back just to get the air out. And again, I don't like to put too much, just a handful. I just take the... And again, I like to just twist the bag. That's just a per personal preference, just to get it a little bit tight and enough just to sit in the hand. Now, I've already kind of pre kind of matched them up to what sizes kind of match. And all I like to do, do you want to come over here, John? Mm -hmm. As I just start in the centre, I just like exactly how I did pipe the biscuit. Oh, don't worry about that. Now what I will say, these biscuits are very delicate. When I started making them to start with, I used to kind of squeeze them and I was fighting, I was breaking them. So just put it on gently and then they won't break. And again, I think I've overfilled my bag slightly. I know this happens, I don't know why I do it when I know that it, I should learn. Now, is there any of my Scottish pals watching in tonight? Please tell me you're there for support. This is strange being here, normally I'm watching at home. And for all the non-Scottish people there, I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. Because <laughs> I'm a fifer. My Edinburgh chums don't even understand me. Well, John's nodding and saying everybody's understanding what you're saying. That's fine. Even the ones with no sound. <laughs> well, there we go. What have I just said? I've pushed it too hard and I've broken it. But never mind. They are very delicate, the beanies. Um... You turn it upside down, nobody will ever notice. <laughs> Tricks of the trade. Yes. <laughs> They are very delicate, these, and the reason is, is they just melt in your mouth. So if you've never had these before, these are like melting moments. So as soon as you bite them, they just really melt in your mouth. They're absolutely gorgeous. Now, don't you think that this, I don't know what you'd actually call this. Swimming platter. Wooden platter. Yeah, like a tree trunk. <laughs> and the other thing is, we've left these plain, but you can dust these with icing sugar afterwards. So if you want to use the lemon flavour over these and the chocolate mint over these, you know, just to give them a little bit of extra flavour than you can do. So lots of people like it, but we decided that we wanted to show you the pattern on the uh, the well. So there we go. And I think the serving platter does show them off. So you can take these back to Bonnie Scotland or my warehouse lads getting them tomorrow. My warehouse lads always get fat on Tuesdays. Well. <laughs> 
Your warehouse lads could get them. Yeah, but <laughs> uh, Lindsay's popping over to the warehouse tomorrow. She can't wait. Um, I know. Yeah. Don't let me loose, but I've already got a list. <laughs> what I will say, just while I do this last one, what I have found when I have baked these before, is I've maybe reduced the amount of buttercream that I've made compared yeah. to the recipe. Because as you can see, I've got loads there left and I've, although I do have some left actually to ice, so yeah, that's not so bad. Yeah. Um, so sometimes I have maybe, oh, I'd rather do like 100 butter to 200, I've maybe done 90 grams of butter and 180 of ice and sugar. Yeah. But oh, I forgot. So this is small. Some yeah, I've got some over there. So they're fantastic. Are. So guys, what do we think of them then? Give so, us the big likes. Yeah, give Woo. her the big likes. <laughs> so these are delicious. Who's made these before? Because I know Laura's made them and uh, we did a class in Holland a few weeks ago and that's where Lindsay first saw it. We did a class in Holland a few weeks ago and we did a little Facebook Live there and that's where you first saw it and had a go, wasn't it? It was and I just thought that they looked very easy. I must admit, I do prefer them with a light dusting of ice and sugar on the top. I think they just give them that little bit of mm. extra. And the, the thing I like about these is, is that I've never made them myself. Laura makes them normally. But I always thought they were difficult. I just always thought they were difficult. And I thought that because they melted in your mouth, you had to be a proper pastry chef or mm. something like that. And uh, believe me, don't worry. It's as simple as Lindsay's made them. The reason she's come here tonight is she's just one of you guys. She's one of me and she just wants to show to you that, you know what, you could go and knock these up yourself very, very quickly. Uh, of, of course, you need our flavoured icing sugar to do it with. Of course, of course. And I think that the icing sugars are just fabulous. I can't praise them enough. Yeah. Good. My colleagues have got to try all the different flavours. I love them all. So I'm going to pop those over there. And has Rob told us where he got this lovely contraption from? This has he it. Is he on there tonight? I want you yes. to give me a good deal. <laughs> it's looking like Asda. Oh, my goodness. Right, so I've got another dummy cake here, guys. Okay. Really fast and simple. So if you, again, one of the things I like to show you guys is, is about making things fast and also very quickly. So, you know, we can be the professional cake baker and we can muck about and take hours and days and stress, but you know what, all our friends just like things to look pretty. And, you know, I agree that these, you know, we may not make these worlds the, the professional way, but what we do do is we make them, they look good. And when your friends around, they always appreciate home baking and that's what it's about. So my home baking tonight is a dummy cake. <laughs> So I am just going to put a little bit of buttercream onto the base of my dummy cake. Now, I'm having a little bit of a nightmare because my buttercream was flowing so lovely and soft before and it's now hardened up. So I'm just having a little bit of a meltdown about it. But you know what I say? It will be all right on the night. Just a little meltdown, Carla. A little meltdown, yeah. So I've made the buttercream tonight and the colour I've used is this tree trunk from Colour Splash. You know that I'm a big fan of the Colour Splash range. I've used tree trunk and I will tell you, you need more than a drop. I've had to use a lot. Um, the one thing I didn't trust with it that was, is that I should have let it darken because if I'd left it alone over the time, it would have darkened up by itself. But I wanted to see it go dark straight away and um, I just kept putting more and more colour in and it, it has gone dark. So what we're going to do here is, so imagine this is your cake. And again, you know what I'm like, just rough it up, slap it on. This is how quick, what time are we timing here? So it's four minutes to nine and let's speed this on, get the cake on. So it is a bit easier on a dummy, I will say, but you know what, if this, butter, if this butter was a bit softer, it'd be just as easy on a normal cake. So get it right up to the edge as well. So let's just put some round here. Don't go around the top of the cake. And to get this light bark effect, just keep bringing your palette knife up and it'll give it this little bark effect because you want it to look like a, well, a fat twig because we're going to put a big flower on here. 
So I'm so excited about finding this Wilton 366. I didn't realise they had such a big one. And uh, any of you who like big ones will be ever so chuffed with this. And I'm not being rude. Anybody's got filthy minds out there. So, uh, <laughs> so we are just running around the sides with this. Really very easy, you don't have to be neat. I've just got to make sure I get it all coloured in. Um, a few people have asked me why I do some nifty nozzles. I'm only going to use one tonight and that's the large star nozzle, which I've never used before. Uh, that's the only one I'm going to use. I've got Karen Davies here next week and that's going to be quite a long session. And then I'm off the following week um, so I'm not here the first week in July. So next week it's Karen Davies. And the week after I'm off. And the week after Louise Brimlow, is it Brimlow? Mm -hmm. Is coming to join us. And uh, I don't know whether you know about Louise, but she was in the first Great British Bake Off Series 1. And um, so she was an entrant there. She actually got through everybody. And uh, she was on that competition. Um, so she's going to come that day and she's going to make us a drip cake. So the week after, I will do um, a whole session on nifty nozzles. Whereas when I've got somebody on as a guest, I just try and do one nifty nozzle. I've also got Rosie Cake Diva coming. She is coming one day in July, I'm just sorting out a date with her. She promised me way back in March that she would come on. And she messaged me today for some dates. And Christina Ludham is coming on as well. I've just got a sort out a date for her to come on. She'll use the nifty nozzle. She makes some great things with them. And um, she'll use them as well. So this is our rough Kate. So I've just got to sort out two days dates for them. So here's the bad boy, here he is. This is such an easy cake for you guys to do. So again, my buttercream's a little bit hard. It wasn't this hard when I started. So this is for all you ladies who hate making leaves. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna form a base and we're off. Form a base and we're off. So my buttercream is slipping yeah. and we're just going to keep going round, keep going round and we're going to make a big sunflower and again I've used the colour splash colouring so don't worry about it all not looking so neat at the moment, it'll all come together. Some tissue, keep your tissue so you've got it clean or a damp cloth. So how we form the leaf, because this is just like you do for your 352. So you're going to go on. So remember, mouth open. So you know I'm always saying, keep the mouth open like the big girl. Well, this is the big mouth, this one. So I'm calling her Big Mama. Form a base. Form a base, form a base. Probably would have helped if I'd put a little bit of buttercream on the top of the cake there, just to help these things stick. I am gonna to have to fill up my bag again, guys. So just hold on. Lindsay, do you need to get out? Oh, you're out Yeah. <laughs> so let me just fill up my bag. So who's gonna buy one of these tips then? So if you don't mind, my buttercream is really hard and it's not flowing nicely. So just give me a minute, I'm going to pop it in the microwave for a second. So this is, so Lindsay, can you take that out for me at the count of no? So you'll see I've got some patchy bits here. So I'm just going to fill those in as well. My spatula is here, Lindsay. I'm just going to fill up those in because you will get this on your normal cake as well the only thing is once you put your buttercream on 
come back off again. So really, you do need to try and do it all at the same time. Oh, that sounds like a beard. Oh, that's perfect. Can you come back back on? I'll just fill these in. That cake that I did before took me no time. The buttercream was flowing lovely and soft. And uh, this kitchen does drive me mad, this one, because even though this kitchen is really warm, I don't know if you can see how hot I am, and Lindsay is really cold, I think it must be something to do with my age, really. Um, I don't feel cold, like physically cold. No. The room's just cold for working in for the buttercream. Yeah, but the buttercream has gone hard. So, let's just do that a bit. Just temperatures. <laughs> There we go, so I'll just scrape that down a bit. Give this a nice tree stump effect. So I've just warmed my buttercream in the microwave just for a couple of minutes. Now don't whatever you do, don't ever warm it in the bag. I saw a lady, I said this once to, on the Facebook Live once, and the lady said, Can you put the nozzle in the microwave? Oh, no, please don't. So here we go. Ah, uh, there. See, look at that. See how much nicer it is when it's soft. I'll just turn around to you guys there. Look how lovely that's coming out now. So I'm going to go around. So Lindsay, you know the brown piping bag there with the nifty nozzles on. Uh -huh. You just hold it in your hand and sure. warm it up. Because I reckon that's going to be the same. I'm going to go around with this three times. So you know those first leaves when they were little funny edges, you can just tidy them up. And you'll see that I'm going in between each one. So who likes this? Does anybody like it? Gonna give it a go? And these are great, I could do matching cupcakes with these as well. I should have done a matching cupcake. So there you go, that's your three times round. And then, and then you can warm up the brown one. And mm -hmm. then this nozzle that I'm going to use here, I'm just gonna get it under the camera for you. I think it's a 71. Um, yes, it's a 71. So it's a Nifty Nozzle 71 and it's the large multi-star. Yep. And all we're gonna do now is very simply, and just to give it those little peaks that you'd get on a sunflower. I'm just going to go round and round, so easy. Round and round. You can just go on top of each other. I think it's so good that the nozzle, you know, they're quite versatile. You could do anything. Yeah. Anything to just right. one. Nathan, yeah, then it's got two nozzles again. Well, let's just clean that up. So you're warming up the green there. Then. Yes, I am. Let's go. So let's get the cloth. Clean up as we go along. So who's going to join me and Lindsay on catch up for buying some of my things that I've kicked out the cupboard? Only used once or not at all in aid of our. Uh, National Cupcake Day. So then, things, guys. again, this is the giant nozzle. I've got two of these, and I've always said to you, you know, when you buy the three, five, two, you know, don't just have one, have two, three, four, because they're great with different colors, because you can make your poncetta, you can make your sunflower, you could make a big white daisy, I suppose, if you wanted to. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna stick that in there, and we're gonna do a nice big leaf. I'm just gonna, do a leaf there. I'm just going to do these really big ones. It's enough for us using this nifty nozzles. You know, I just didn't see we get it right at all. When it clicks, it clicks. You know, and I put them away and I didn't use them. I was too scared to because I thought I'm doing something, you know, I don't want to get it. But <laughs> once I get a master deck, got the bag and everything right and the pressure, that they're so easy to use. Yeah. So, we're just going to put a couple of leaves on. So, I don't know whether John's been able to focus in there. Mm -hmm. And 
couple of leaves. Yeah, Lindsay's absolutely right with nifty nozzles. Once you learn the consistency of your buttercream, and that's what all of you have a problem with, um, once you've mastered that, you are laughing. You can pretty much do anything with them. So I'm just going to pop in a little bit of a, I always get a bit of a leaf hanging out somewhere, don't you? Yeah, I've got a cream here. So. That's taking 11 minutes so far. So, 11 minutes and that's with talking. So there we go, guys. That's the one I've done in front of you. Admittedly, it is on a dome cake. On the dome cake. It, admittedly, it is on a polystyrene cake. But if you make your big cake and you put that up, I'm almost sure if you gave that to your family on a Sunday afternoon or on National Cupcake Day, everybody will be delighted. So what do we think, guys? Do we like it? Yeah? So that there, I put on the Facebook today, I've actually put a link on Facebook, I pinned it to the top of the page, and at the top of the page, it tells you what Lindsay's done, it gives you the link to the flavoured icing sugars, it gives you a link to the peony cutters, a link to the big new nozzle, the big mama. Um, what else does it give you a link to? I've not done the colour splash. I've done a link to the Saraceno. I've also put the recipe on there. Remember, the recipe is for lemon and blueberry. But all that is, is that I'm not going to do a recipe for every single flavour. It means it works with any flavour that you choose. Lindsay's done them in lemon. She's done them in chocolate mint. Laura's done them in lemon with blueberry buttercream ice cream, uh, icing, icing sugar. And uh, yeah, the world's your so you can have a play. So who's going to join me at half past nine, I think it's going to be? Half past nine, we should be ready. Uh, we'll come back, so that'll give you time to go and have a cup of tea, put your feet up for a couple of minutes. Lindsay and I are going to run around like lunatics cleaning up, and we will be back. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye.